Right, today we're very privileged to have in the studio here at Sport24, ex-Springbok, current Supersport commentator, Brayton Pulso, obviously the man who invented the Bola McKissy. We're just going to chat to him today and get a few questions, get to know Brayton a little bit better. Did you ever, in your career, feel like a quota player? I think, yeah, always, uh, obviously quota, quota system has, has been a sensitive issue, you know, ever since I started playing rugby. Uh, first of all, you know, I went to Stellenbosch University and... Uh, at the time, I was the only player of colour in, this, in this, the whole side. And I must say, you know, the guys around me, you know, all the Burkis and the, the guys from, from around, almost made, made me feel at home. Uh, but I think because of the time I had the talent and the skill, I was a little bit maybe fast tracking into the Western Province setup. And, 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 and when I got selected for the Western Province setup, I, I felt a little bit uncomfortable because uh, at the time I knew I was probably maybe good enough, but I was not ready yet. And I think that's where the fine line is, you know, on how you fast track players or how you develop, develop players of, of colour into the, the system. So it was the only time when I really felt a bit uncomfortable. But, you know, coming from a farm background, I think as a, as a player of colour, you have to earn respect. You have to uh, make sure that you do deserve that. You must feel comfortable in a team setup. And I think times have really changed from, from when I started. I mean, when I, when I started, I remember you know, guys like Tinas Lanier and Chester Williams, they were probably the pioneers. And then... I came about, you know, so I was fortunate to be long in a setup, you know, played 64 tests, which was really, really special for me. Um, so if you play more than 50 teams, for, uh, 50 games for your country, you know, it, it says a lot. And, you know, there were, there were tough times when we went overseas as, 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 as a Springbok team, you know. I remember me and uh, Dion Kaiser, we always had to answer those questions, you know, about quota and what's happening in South Africa, the politics. So uh, it wasn't always easy as a player because, uh, as we know, as African rugby, you know, it's not just rugby. There's a lot of things off the field, and I think that throughout my career, I learned a lot about how to handle certain things. And uh, there were controversial times. Uh, I mean, talking about style draft and all those kind of things, we can we can talk about it all day. But uh, you know, I had, a, I had a fabulous career. I mean, when I look back, the game did wonders for me. It was awesome to me. I've been blessed uh, with a lot of uh, great games which which I could play in. And I met a lot of mates through, through rugby, you know, and, uh, you know, especially to the young kids out there, you know, uh, if, if you want to become a rugby player, you're going to have to work out, you're going to have to sacrifice, and it's very important that you don't let those distractions, you know, things like the quotas and, and, and off the field stuff distract you as a player, because it's important to stay focused on what you want to achieve. I mean, when I went to Stellenbosch, I was a little guy, and some people said I will never, never make it, you know, but in my mind, I just knew that I wanted to be there. What, what, what's the history with the, with the summer sultan? Were, were any of your coaches ever a bit nervous about you injuring yourself? Yeah, some, some was, uh, thank you. Let me just take you back where the summer stall of the Bolivikisi started. Uh, you know, growing up as farm boys, uh, we used to play after school, you know, we played rugby, cricket, soccer, all kinds of sports on the farm. And uh, there was a little big open field which we all used to play on. And amazingly, you know, we were a lot of boys, we were probably like 20, 25 boys playing with each other, you know, rugby and all these kind of games. And one day, some of the guys just started making, doing these pull kisses. So it became natural. So we all just started doing it. You know, and when I scored my third try against Italy, you know, I was so overwhelmed. And it's almost like a flashback just came up to my mind and I had to do something. It was just, it was just a special day for me. And then the, the Bola McKissie started coming, you know, but obviously I only left it for the big games, you know, like Calica Finals or big Springbok games. I wasn't going to do it just because I was like, doing it. But uh, like, like, I said, like, like I said as well, some coaches were a bit uh, worried about it. They were nervous because, you know, you can easily break something, especially when the field slippery. Uh, but, uh, oh, oh, you know, all in all, I mean, people around the country always, always love me doing it. Uh, uh, except uh, the old tunnies, you know, when I get to the airports and stuff, they always say, Breite el sien, je gaan jou nek breek, jy moet dit doen nie. So, uh, but it was good fun. It was all in the spirit of the game. And, and I think it's been a trademark of mine for a long time.